Hello, good evening everybody. Welcome to Home Theatre Back to Basics. I'm Aaron here and uh, we are at Plaza Singapura, the AV Experience Studio. I'll talk to you about it later. But in the meantime, uh, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. We'll be going through the basics of home theatre, you know, what, what do the different numbers mean, what do all the different terminologies that people use mean, um, what to get, what not to get, how to connect, how to read the specifications. We'll go into the basic stuff, yeah, to make sure you at least have an idea of how to proceed with your home theatre setup at home in the future. But it, right now, uh, also, we are doing a giveaway, in case you didn't know, we're having the Yamaha AV Lucky Giveaway, or giving away this. This is the TWE3B. These are new wireless, true wireless earphones from Yamaha. Very colorful, comes in six different colors. They look something like that. They are worth $419, and we are giving them away for free. Six colors to give away, and all you need to do is participate in our giveaway on our Facebook and Instagram. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, please have a look, yeah? And good luck to you, okay? So, let's start. Home theater, back to basics, right? And uh, again, introduction, I'm Aaron. I'm the retail executive of the Yamaha AV Experience Studio here at Plaza Singapura 06-02. So, if you're watching live now at Plaza Singapura and uh, you want to walk by to say hello, feel free yeah, to drop by, yeah? And you want to join me also can lah. See how lah, huh? Right? So you can come by to our store to test everything. You can try out our new headphones. You can hear, listen to our home theater systems. Uh, try out the new speakers. Or if you have any questions at all, like like you're not sure uh, how your existing you know amplifier, you want to add streaming to it and things like that. You're not sure how to do that. You come in, you can come and look for us at the AV Experience today at Plaza Singapore. And let's have a look at how it looks like. Yeah, so this is inside the store. As you can see, we have speakers for you to try out. We have receivers for you to try out. Very comfortable place. And this is our sound room, right? As you can see, we have a home theater set up for you to try, right? And of course, we have the top of the line stereo audio file equipment for you to try. Uh, this above me right now, this is the NS5000. It is Yamaha's flagship audio file bookshelf speakers. They say bookshelf, but it's kind of huge. Uh, nonetheless, the three-way speakers sounds fantastic. Uh, and you'll be able to hear, you know, try out things like that when you're here. Okay, let's get back to topic. And this is the most important question before you start. I, before you even think about getting a home theater system, you need to ask yourself what you really want. In my experience, I find that customers always boil down to two different types of customers. One, they want to get the proper cinematic sound with surround sound and everything, or they just want better sound. Okay? So, if you, know, you are in for the cinematic experience, you want the surround effect, you want to hear the planes flying all over you, you want to hear the bullets whizzing past your back, you want you know to make your home or your room into a cinema to replicate the experience you get in the cinema then you need a proper home theater system or nowadays you can get a, a sound bar that is capable of producing surround sound as well right or if you don't need right surround sound you just want better sound for your tv you don't even need a home theater system, actually. Uh, so if the surround sound is not important to you, you just want to improve TV sound, or, you know, a lot of people also, they say, hey, I also want a radio, and I want to stream music as well. You don't need a home theater system for that. You can get a sound bar. You can get a, a, a in fact, you don't even need a sound bar if you have an existing hi-fi system, a micro hi-fi system, or even other active speakers. You can uh, actually connect to this and make your TV sound better. Right? There are many ways to make it sound better. So which to choose? Which setup to choose? Right? Hello? Here we go. So if you want the ultimate in surround sound, right? 
if your focus is on the cinematic experience. Then you need a proper home theatre setup with an AV receiver and speakers and all the speakers to surround your room. It's the most modular and versatile system of all of them because actually each components are separate and if you if you're adventurous, right, each speaker can be a different make. You know, you can get a Yamaha AV receiver, you can get a Yamaha center speaker, and the left speaker you can use from another brand, the right speaker you can use another brand. You should not do that uh, because you want them to have the same sound signature, right, for them to be matching. Uh, but, I mean, if you want to, you can. That's the point. It's modular. The most modular of all the systems. However, it is also the most bulky. And this one, uh, uh, a lot of wives and a lot of girlfriends would know <laughs> because we have a lot of, uh, you know, husbands and boyfriends wanting to set up a system and the wife is always coming down to check on them to make sure that it's not too big or not too obvious. Uh, but, you know, the speakers, there are many ways to conceal it. It depends on your design of your room as well. Uh, but, of course, it's good that when you come down to our home uh, AV Experience Studio at Yamaha at Plaza Singapura, It's good for them to try it out as well, to let them hear the difference, you know, between a proper home theater system and a soundbar. And who knows, maybe they might want a system of their own as well. So this system requires the most wires because each individual speaker will have to be connected to the AV receiver because the AV receiver is what powers those speakers. So in all the setups, this will be the least convenient. The best sound, the least convenient. Right. However, for Yamaha systems, we have uh, uh, something to make it easier for you. For our music cast AV receivers, you can actually have a wireless subwoofer and you can have your rear left, rear right speakers wireless as well using Yamaha music cast receivers and music cast speakers. And as for connectivity for your projector and for your TVs, you'll usually be using HDMI. For soundbars, when would you choose a soundbar? When your focus is on compactness. You want everything to be small, compact, out of sight, right? And yet you still want good sound or you want good cinematic sound. So you get a soundbar, which is surround sound capable. So even if you use it to play music, for soundbars, generally speaking, they are tuned for the cinematic experience. And don't get confused, because for soundbars, there are two types of surround. There are stereo soundbars with virtual surround. Now, virtual surround is, as its name suggests, it is virtual. All it does is expands the sound, it, it helps the sound encompass you. It makes you feel like you're inside the sound field which is good. However, you won't be able to feel the transient e effects, right? You just feel that, you know, you're immersed in a the sound, there's no direction. Then there are sound bars that are capable of giving you true surround. Some of them, they have removable speakers. Others, like uh, Yamaha surround sound bars, we do sound beaming. We bounce the sound off the walls to make it sound like you have speakers around you. So if you want the cinematic experience yet you don't want, maybe your room is small or you just like everything to be a little bit not more tidier, then you can get a slim soundbar with a surround capable system. This is the least modular of all the systems to choose from because it is it's on its own. It's very hard to connect to, to other devices to add to it. Uh, you, can, you, you can use multiple sources with it, but you can't you know, use a soundbar. For example, a lot of people ask us, um, Aaron, can I add a soundbar to my existing system and use it as my center speaker? The answer is most of the time no. Even if you can, uh, through some connectivity magic, not suggested because it is its own self-contained ecosystem, so to speak. And of course, it uses HDMI connectivity as well. And for stereo systems, if surround sound is not important to you at all, but you still want better sound, you want to improve your TV sound, you want to make the vocal sound better, you want to get higher quality music when you're watching YouTube and all that, you can technically connect any stereo system ex 
this to your TV, most of them would have, like as you can see here, optical or coax connections or line in connection. Most TVs will have either of these outputs, and most stereo systems will have the inputs as well for the users. So, if your focus is not on the cinematic experience, if you pref if you're more into music, and you just want clearer sound from the TV, you know you can get your even maybe your existing stereo amplifiers and receivers. If you have a micro hi-fi system, or you have other active speakers, you can just plug straight into it, and it will improve your TV sound. So for this particular live show, we will be focusing on the home theater setup, right? We will talk about sound bars and stereo systems next month, where we will focus on how to improve your TV sound. But again, back to topic, we are talking about the basics of home theater system. Okay, one thing you'll hear is active or passive speaker. Generally speaking, Passive speakers are traditional speakers. So what, what passive mean? Passive speakers do not have their own power. They have to be powered by something. So they are passive. And like, for example, your home theater system, it needs an AV receiver, right? That is what powers those speakers. That's why you need the cables to connect to those speakers because that is what's providing the power to those speakers. Right? And so passive speakers are basically what you think of as traditional speakers that are powered by amplifiers and receivers. So most of the speakers you know are passive speakers. And what are active speakers? It's very simple. They are its own self-contained unit. It has its own power and amplification built in. And how to tell? Very easy. If the speaker has its own power cord that plugs into the power point, that is most likely an active speaker. And it accepts inputs directly. So you can, blue, you can connect Bluetooth and send your music to it. You can connect other devices to it. That is usually an active speaker. Some examples are, of course, subwoofers, soundbars. Soundbars are active speaker systems, right? Monitor speakers, uh, not, not the computer monitor. Huh? It's the type of speaker called the monitor speaker usually used in uh, production, right? Uh, your portable Bluetooth speakers, those are active speakers technically. And network speakers that you use at home, those are active speakers. So what do these number mean? When you talk about home theater system, you always hear people say 7.1.4, 5.1.2 and all that, something like this. What do these numbers mean? Actually, it's very easy. You don't need to get confused. It just means that the first number is always the number of year level speakers. Now we have to talk about year level speakers because uh, nowadays you have at most, right? We'll explain what is that later. The second number is the number of subwoofers. So if you see a 5.1 system, you have a, that means the setup has five speakers and one subwoofer. If it's 7.2, seven speakers and two subwoofers, total nine speakers, right? So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, where were we? We were talking about the third number. This is something new, quite recent. You, you hear talk about, oh, Atmos and all that. What is Atmos? Atmos is basically this. This is what makes a system an Atmos system, right? The third number means the number of height channels that you have. So, for example, here, we are looking at 5.1.2. It means that you have a system with a total of eight speakers. Five on the year level, one subwoofer, and two height channels. Okay. So what to do with this information? It is important because, for example, you need to know how many, when you get an AV receiver, you need to know how many channels is capable of driving. So how to find out? Very simple. You add the first and the last number, right? So in this case, 5.1.2, you need a receiver that's capable of driving seven channels. You need a seven channel receiver. And, for example, if you have a 7.2.4 system, 7 plus 4 is 11. So you need a 11-channel system. Notice that the number of subwoofers does not matter because the AV receiver does not need to power subwoofers. As we learned just now, subwoofers are active speakers. So the way it is connected to the subwoofer, there is no power coming out from the AV receiver. Yeah. 
but the rest of the speakers you need. So if you have a 7.2.4 system, even though you have 13 speakers, you only need an 11 channel receiver. All right, pretty simple, pretty simple. This is where a lot of people make mistakes. So let's say you come, you go to a shop, the salesperson tells you, this amp, this is a seven channel amp and it is 100 watts. Now, question, is it 100 watts per channel? In that all seven channels are capable of outputting 100 watts? Or is it that this amplifier is capable of outputting 100 watts? A lot of people think that all seven channels are running at 100 watts. That's not the case. Huh? That's not the case. But how do you tell? You have to look at how it is measured. So let's look at this. So this is a, the specifications of a AV receiver. You have three numbers. These are all different ways of measurements. For us, we like to take the most accurate measurements. So we always take what is usually the lowest number among the three, right? Because as you can see here, the rated output power, one kilohertz, one channel driven. That means this was tested with only one speaker playing one tone, a single tone. And you get 135 watts of power. So are you getting this 135 watts of power at seven on all seven channels? No, this is only on one speaker. Same for this, maximum effective output. One kilohertz, one channel driven. This is a larger number. Some people, when they market their products, they like to use this number because it's bigger, it's higher, right? Uh, but it is not accurate. For us, we like to use this. Rated output power, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, two channel driven, 110 watts. So what does this mean? This means that you have two speakers connected and they're playing a range of tones between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And this is the power you get. Oh, where did my mouse go? 110 watts. Yeah. Sometimes also known as RMS. All right. So, when, so in this case, when the amplifier is 110 watts, it is for two channels, not all seven channels. Yeah. And it is fine. Because when you're watching a movie, right, not all seven channels, in this case, let's say you're, you have a 7.2 setup, not all speakers are being driven at the same time. They're driven one after another, and the power will be distributed dynamically. So it is fine. It is fine, right? Now the second part. Let's say the numbers are the same, are similar. So both 135 watts, 100. Let's use rated output power again. 110 watts. However, this is at 8 ohms and this is at 6 ohms. Which one is supposedly able to provide more power? Now, this thing down here, this is called impedance. Think of it as restriction, a blockage. So the less blockage, the more power can go through. Okay? So in this case, technically, this machine here will be able to provide more power than this device here because at a low with low restriction it is able to provide the same amount of power all right there's actually a mathematical formula you can find you can go in google and, and calculate but uh, for audio system because it's not it depends on the ability of the transformer and the rest of the electronics in the system to be able to provide the power. So I'm not going to show you how to calculate because even if you get a number, it's not going to be accurate, right? Just that when you look at the specification, specifications on a sheet, know that sometimes, for example, you can have two machines that have the same wattage and yet one is technically able to provide more power because it is able to drive to give more power at the high, if despite having a speaker that's harder to drive. Yeah? Okay. So let's talk about layouts. So this is a typical 5.1 layout. Now, Yamaha products are very cool. The user manuals are available online for everybody to download. For example, this, I basically 
cut and paste from the menu of the RX A eight A. You can look if you are interested in any specific models. You can search for the menu and download it and have a look at it to see how the system works. But yeah, so this is the most common layout. If you want a home theater system, this this is the minimum that you should get. Five speakers with a subwoofer. Then what are the five speakers? You have center, left, right, surround left, surround right. That is five. And where does the point one come in? The subwoofer. And in this case, you see two, but the idea is that you can put either on the left or right. Okay. Then 7.1, where do the extra two speakers go? So you have center left, right, surround left, surround right. You have two more at the rear. So you have more effects coming from the back. This is 7.1. Okay. Then we talk about Atmos. So for Atmos, what's so special about Atmos? As you can see here, you have two additional speakers which are higher, placed above the rest of the other speakers. Why? Because Atmos gives you real three-dimensional sound. If you think about it, the old surround systems are all 2D, right? Because you have, you have center, left, right, rear, left, rear, right, but it's flat. With Atmos, it gives you height, so you have actual 3D sound. And this is how it is able to give you what they call object-based sound. That means the sound is able to be tuned in such a way that you can tell you know, you can literally give it a uh, positioning in a three-dimensional field instead of just, you know, from the front to back, from the back to front, but you can actually have a position in a 3D space. You get real 3D sound. So for Yamaha AV receivers, or actually for most, there are two ways to do it. One, the easiest way without putting ceiling speakers is to add two high channels in front. So this is 5.1.2. You have the usual 5 by one setup here, and you add two normal speakers above the front left and the front right. And there you have it. This is the easiest way to get a 5.1. This is the easiest way to get a at most setup at home. All right. Oop. I keep pressing the wrong button here. And if, let's say, you're undergoing renovation, the, I would say the recommended way to get an at most uh, uh, sound layout is to add, instead of adding high channels here, you add ceiling speakers. Yeah? Near where your sitting position is. We'll show you where to put the high speakers later. So there are two ways to add at most. One is with, if you don't want to touch your ceiling, you can just add two speakers in front, above your left and right speaker. Or ideally, you have speakers overhead. So this would be a proper full-blown 11 channels lay, uh, at most layout with two subwoofers using presence instead of ceiling speakers. Right? You have your 7.1 set up here, and you have front presence, front presence right, and then your surround back and surround back right. 7.2.4. And the difference between this and the in ceiling one, the four speakers, the four high speakers will be in the ceiling instead. Very easy. So for overhead speakers, this is taken from Dolby's own website. You can go to their website and have a look. They have very comprehensive guides down there on how to position your speakers at home. Right? For, so for overhead speakers, as you can see, it's quite easy. Lah, huh? in, in, plain, in, in plain English, just put the two speakers roughly above your head. Very easy. Following your left and right speakers. Okay? As for four, if you, want, if you have uh, enough space and money for four overhead speakers, put them slightly in front and slightly to the back of your sitting position. Very easy, yeah? Okay? So what is the makeup of a home theater system? It starts with this. These are the AV receivers. This is the heart of the entire system. As you can see here, Yamaha, this is the RX V6A. It is the, it got the ISA award for best product, 2021 to 22, right? Then 
this is where everything connects to. Now let's have a look at its connections. So this looks kind of complicated, huh? don't worry, okay? Let's break it down. What do you use this for? What do you connect to here? First of all, of course, HDMI. High definition media interface. You don't need to know. But this is basically what you use to connect to your TV and all your other multimedia devices. It can be your PlayStation, it can be your Xbox, it can be your Blu-ray player, it can be your PC even, right? So the HDMI ARC, this is the out port. This goes to your projector or your television. And these are the inputs here. So on the V6, you have seven inputs you can connect. Starhub TV, Singtel TV, PS3, PS4, PS5, and two or three more Xboxes. Easy. No problems at all. And all of them will be using the HDMI cable. For some of the older devices, you can use the optical connection or the coaxial connection. So these are technically digital as well. And as you can see for optical, it uses the optical cable. This is what the cable looks like. Coax is technically an RCA cable. It's a bit tricky. Um, supposedly to use a, if you want to use the, the, the RCA coax cable for this, it has to be 75 ohms cable, not just any cable will do, but from what I understand, majority of the RCA cables in the market are around that spec. So technically, you could try out just using your existing RCA cable anyway. If it doesn't work, then get a proper RCA coax cable for that. Okay, and these are all the old school RCA connectors. They are inputs and outputs here. So audio in, as you can see, these three pairs here. So if you have older CD players, for example, you have an iPod, you want to connect to this, you can get a 3.5 mm jack to an RCA cable output. And I'm sure you have seen this cable before, this red and white cable before. I'm sure everybody has a few spare at home. These are basically RCA connectors, right? So if you have any older audio systems that you would like to connect to this receiver, you can connect to this part here. Under audio 3, audio 4, audio 5. So when you're switching the, between devices on an AV receiver, this is what you switch to. Now, for turntables or vinyl turntables without their own, what do you call it, phono stage, without their own built-in amplification, you can use this AV receiver as an amplifier and you connect that to the phono in connectors here, right? It even has a grounding uh, connector here for some turntables to use it. And you have output here. So this is for sound to come out from this re AV receiver, right? It's basically two main things. The subwoofer. So this unit can support up to 7.2 channels. So you can see two subwoofer connectors here. Or let's say you want to have your front channels driven by an external amplifier. This AV receiver can have the front two channels used as a pre-amp, as pre-amplifier as well to control the sound, but have the sound amplified outside. So as you can see, this is a hub for everything. You can connect practically everything to this and you can use it as a hub to control other equipment as well. And of course, the most important thing, the speaker binding port. So this is where you connect all the speaker wires to it, red to red, black to red, or if the speaker cable is of another color, or even if both are the same color, usually you have one cable that is that has printed words on it, one cable that doesn't have it, then you decide. So maybe you can get uh, the printed one for red and the non-printed one for black, as long as they're all the same, right? And you can also connect banana plugs. So if you have cables and you want them to be neater and tidier, like we use banana plugs a lot here in the in the Yamaha EV Experience Studio because you're constantly shifting the connections around. It's much more convenient that way for us. Uh, for you, maybe because it looks neater behind, you want the cables to be uh, lined up neater instead of having them tied to the post. You can connect banana posts, uh, banana plugs. These banana plugs to the cables here. And for Yamaha AV receivers, or in fact for all our amplifiers and things like that, just one thing to note, 
if you want to plug in your banana plug, you have to remove the plastic cap. There are all these tiny little plastic caps here. Just a small little screwdriver and pull them out and you'll be fine. All right. So what another thing that tends to uh, confuse a lot of people is audio return channel. Your HDMI audio return channel or ARC. So what is it for? Very simple. In the past, you have a TV, you have your soundbar or home theater or the AVR here, the AV receiver here. You had one cable going up for the video and another cable coming down for the audio. What HDMI ARC lets you do is to do this same thing with one cable. So one HDMI cable, you can have video going up to the TV and you have sound coming from the TV down to the AV receiver, right? I need to learn how to control this better, yeah? So what is ARC for? Because nowadays you have smart TV, right? Or example, if you're using your TV's uh, broadcasting system to, to watch your television, free to air channel, the sound will be from the TV, but you want the sound to still come out from your home theater system. Then instead of having a separate cable for the sound to come down, you can use the same HDMI cable to get the sound signal from the TV or the Protectors, no, mostly TV to your AV receiver. Yeah, sends audio from the TV to the AVR and helps reduce cluster cable because now you only need one cable. And when is ARC useful? Again, when you're using your TV as a source. So not only for TV signals, but like nowadays the smart TV, right? You can watch Netflix and all, you can use and, and, and Tudo and all that on a lot of smart TVs nowadays. So the sound is coming from the TV. As long as the sound is the as long as the TV is the source of the sound, you can use ARC instead of another cable to send the sound back to your uh, AVR. Or let's say you have a basic soundbar, only has two HDMI inputs, but you have four or five different devices. Usually, the TV has more HDMI inputs in it. Then you can use instead of using the soundbar or the AVR as the hub. You use the TV as the hub. So all your devices, you connect to your TV and then have the TV send the sound down to the AVR. Right? So this is the second part where ARC becomes useful for you. Hmm? Easy, right? So <sighs> there are two different types of ARC now. There's ARC, there's a standard ARC since six, seven years ago, and there is now EARC. Long story short, EARC lets you send higher quality sound uh, down the cable, right? I'm not, going to go, I'm not going to go too much into the differences here, but if you want to be able to use your TV as a hub and be able to receive sound that is better than compressed 5.1, you need a TV and AVR and cables that support ER. This comparison chart here is available on hdmi.org. So do your homework. You can go to the website and check. Or in fact, just Google HDMI differences and this picture will come up. Or you can pause this video and watch this, of course. All right. So we talk about the AVR and the connections that it has. What other components of the home theater system are there? Of course, the speakers. Lah. And one of the most important speakers there are is the center speaker. Usually designed to be flat, as you can see here, because it's designed to be placed below the projector or television screen. Now, this is where your audio comes out from. And a lot of the effects, the focus of the effects of the scene will be coming out from. So center speakers are very important. And of course, you have your front speakers. So you have center, and then you have left and right. So depending on the size of your room, or your budget, or your preference, or your visual preference, or how you want to set up the room, you can get a proper tower speaker, or you can get book, smaller bookshelf speakers at all. Like I said, home theater systems are super modular. You can mix and match. You don't even need to get the same, same speakers from the same brand. Uh, generally, you should so that they, the, the sonic signatures are matching. But if you don't want to, and you're feeling brave, sure, why not? Yeah. And for surround speakers, now, This is a ceiling speaker. 
So for the surround speakers, uh, you can also use full tower speakers if you have the space and you have the budget. Or if you want to have the front as your tower and your rear surround speakers as the smaller bookshelf speakers, you can do that, right? Or you can even use the rear speakers as the, 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 the uh, ceiling speakers as your surround speakers also. No problem. Again, very flexible. But there are so just to show you that there are many options to choose from. All right? And of course, the subwoofer. This is what lets you rock your wall. If you want to hear explosions, you want you want the volcano eruption to be felt in your chest, you need to get a good subwoofer, right? Because this is what uh, produces the low frequencies for all the rumble and all the boom. So what to prioritize? So if let's say you are on a budget, right? What to prioritize on? Very simple. All the speakers you see in this picture or basically most of the speakers that you put in the front. So the center, the left, the right, and the subwoofer, right? If you have a limited budget, most of it should go into these speakers. Then you can get, uh, you can save some money on the rear speakers, the surround speakers, and your ammo speakers, because those are for effect. Whereas, most of the music, most of the uh, the main sound effects, most of the dialogue will be coming from these few speakers, especially the center, left and right. So prioritize all these that you see in this picture. Easy, right? Okay. So why Yamaha? Why Yamaha speakers? Why Yamaha AV receiver? Because we have been in this game for a very long time and we have... Uh, a lot of experience to make up for it. We are the world's largest instrument manufacturer. One in four instruments sold around the world um, is a Yamaha instrument. I mean, I'm from Singapore. I used to be in a band. Practically all our band instruments are Yamaha, right? And we are also the world's largest music distributor. At any point of time, we have at least 7 million students around the world. And not only this, but Yamaha is a leader in the pro audio game. We power a lot of prestigious concert halls and we power a lot of venues for, and for all the various uh, concert events as well. And Yamaha is also a leader in innovation. So since 2010, Yamaha has already registered more than 740 patents from 2010. Before that, definitely a lot more. So, Yamaha knows what they're doing. Huh? Yamaha knows what they're doing. And we also have this thing called Music Cast. What is Music Cast? It is a wireless multi room audio system that allows you to do many, 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 many things. And in fact, you see this QR code in front of you now? You can scan this QR code and download the app and try it for free, even though you don't have any Yamaha products at, uh, with you right now, just to see how it works. So what can you do with music cards? Or why should you get Yamaha music cards products? First, for home theater. If you find, I mean, the cables for the speakers in front are generally straightforward. The problem is when you want to run wires to connect your rear speakers, correct? That one is very troublesome, especially if you're really in a, in a, in a, in a locale where you already live in. So instead of running speakers or putting trunking and all that, your rear left and right speakers, you can use wireless speakers for that. So just get any music cast capable Yamaha AV receiver, uh, get Yamaha music cast speakers, and you can plug them in as your rear speakers wirelessly. Very easy. And with this setup, you can set up, you can create an up to 5.1.2 set up for your home theater system. And you can have you, you can also you also have a wireless subwoofer for you as well. And you can share your music across all music cast devices. So you you know you can have one music cast speaker in your study room, one music cast speaker in your kitchen, another music cast speaker in your toilet even. And you can have all of them playing for example if you're watching a uh, if you're watching a soccer game 
and is broadcasting in, 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 in Dolby Digital, right? You can have the same sound spread throughout your entire home so that you won't miss what's happening. Or let's say you get a MusicCast turntable. This is the MusicCast Vinyl 500, right? It is in your library with your whole library of uh, vinyl. You can cast your vinyl wirelessly to your home theater receiver or music car speaker or music car soundbar throughout your home or in another location in your home over our music car system. Fantastic, isn't it? So you can share music with music cars throughout the entire home. And of course, you have network streaming. So for example, for Spotify, now uh, you can stream directly from the server to the device instead of doing it through Bluetooth. Because Bluetooth is quite limited. It is fantastic for portable hearing, like Bluetooth headphones and things like that. But if you're at home, you can use Spotify Connect, for example, and then listen to music throughout all your music card speakers. You can also, of course, listen to Tidal, you listen to Napster. Uh, available services vary with geographical locations and product models, right? And oh yeah, uh, Arable, this is uh, air internet radio as well. So, as long as your API is connected to the internet, you can listen to international radio, not just local radio. And it, because, you know, it is not uh, subject to interference, as long as you have good internet connection, you have good quality radio. And all Yamaha AV receivers, even those without music class, even the entry levels without, without music class has an auto calibration system. We call it YPAO. Or some people like to call it WIPAO. It's a, basically a microphone. You plug into the... So you set everything up. You connect this microphone to the AV receiver, put it at your sitting position, and let it run. And it will adjust everything automatically. Or if you are the type who likes to play around with the sound, you can, let, you can use this as a baseline and then fine-tune it further. Or if you want to do it manually as well, also can, up to you. Right? And surround AI. So only available on the higher end models, usually the Avantage model. Later we'll talk about the Avantage models. So what's surround AI? So in the past, you have Yamaha has a lot of music of uh, sound programs. Right? Yamaha pretty much pioneered this 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 thing. But there's one issue. Um, you know different movies. Not all movies are action movies, for example. Different, different sound programs work well for different movies. And you have to select them individually for you know, this show and that show. With Surround AI, the system is able to detect what sort of scene it is, whether it's quiet or dynamic or action-oriented or speech-focused and adjust the sound accordingly to give you the best overall experience. Because, let's face it, because even, even in an action movie, there are quiet moments. Yeah, the intimate moments, right? You, it would be weird to have an intimate moment tuned to sound dynamic, for example. So with Surround AI, the system is smart enough to tell what you're watching at a point in time and adjust accordingly. Mm. And of course, Yamaha makes award-winning products, right? As you can see here, again, this is the V6A. This is the entry-level model. We have two main series of AV receivers. We have the V series, like this is one of them. And we have our Avantage model. This is our higher end model for AV receiver. If you, if you think the V6 is good, wait till you listen to the Avantage model, right? So what that sets them apart? The little details, for example, this is an extra foot. What's so special about this foot? Just this foot, helps improve the sound quality. How? In sound, it's all about reducing interference. And one of the interference, one of the one one type of interference that you get are vibrations from electronics. The moment you switch something on, it harms, it creates a vibration. This foot has been researched, a lot of research and measurements have been made to find out where. <laughs> to place this little foot to prevent the vibrations from spreading around the machine, interfering with the sound. 
And of course, it's not just the foot, it's everything else inside the machine and around the AV receiver. The whole body is much more rigid, right? The metal panels are thicker. The transformer is bigger. Even the layout of the circuitry, as you can see here, this Advantage model is... Uh, oh no, I can't think of the term right now, but it is balanced. So the left channels and the right channels will not interfere with each other. And because the spacing between the transformer and the amplifiers on the left and on the right is shorter, the signal path is shorter, which means you can get more dynamic sound. So this whole package and of course you have the components so the amplifier the the the, the chips on it the filters the capacitors are all different compared in the advantage model compared to the b series and i would say the models in the market as well this one sets advantage models apart and uh, yeah that's it this is the home theater. This is the back to basics. We've gone through some pretty technical stuff, like how to tell, uh, how to read the specifications and go through all the different components of the home theater system. So hopefully you can set up, you know, something like that in your home easily. Yeah. And if you're thinking of getting one, or again, no idea where to start, or you prefer to speak to someone about it, Come down, look for us. This is the Yamaha AV Experience Studio, right? We have a whole room set up for you to try all these things out. We're at Plaza Singapura 06-02, just uh, beside the lift. And, you know, talk to us so that we can help you create your dream home theater system at home. All right? So, yeah, that's it. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, and since we are live, it means I can answer your questions. So let's see if you have any questions to answer. Let's see, let's see. Your favorite is a two-speaker setup? Huh. I mean, uh, so if you prefer a two-speaker setup, you can use an AV receiver as well, or you can use a stereo receiver which is more musically tuned. So it depends on whether you want dynamic sound or musical sound, you know? Commonly used equipment, but either... Hmm, no idea what you mean. The, spout, the tower speaker you should looks cool. What is the model and price? Is it in live demo in the shop? Ah, yes, it is. So I believe you were talking about this one, right? You were talking about da, 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 da. so many pictures. Still not still not used to this setup, so excuse me. Let's look for it. Let's look for it. You should be talking about this one. This is the NS555. This is a very good starter speaker. Yes, it is available in our shop for demo. For demo. You can come down to our shop and give it a try. This particular model, this is the NS555 tower speaker. Uh, for home theater systems. You can use it for stereo as well. Is it important to match the impedance of the speakers? Okay, in this case, the answer is not really yes, because nowadays you don't have to worry because most consumer speakers are rated between 4 to 8 ohms. So if most speakers on the market, for example, most Yamaha speakers are, most Yamaha speakers are rated at 6 ohms, right? If you go to another brand, it could be 8 ohms. You go to another brand, it could be 4 ohms. So generally speaking, most speakers that you, consumer speakers that you get in the market are between 4 to 8 ohms. So in terms of impedance, you don't really have to pay too much attention to it unless you're trying to connect professional, some, some professional speakers, like certain ceiling speakers are designed for high impedance use, right? That means they go way past 8 ohms. Huh? So that kind you need to 
pay attention a little bit. But, but generally speaking, most consumer speakers for consumer use, you know, in, in like home theater system and things like that are between 4 to 8 ohms. And most AV receivers and amplifiers in the market cater to 4 to 8 ohms. So you don't really have to worry too much about that. Just sort of check it out. As long as it's between 4 to 8 ohms, it should be fine. Okay. Wired for the back surround speakers, wired or wireless. If room, if the cabling in the room is not an issue, so it really depends. With if you if you can use wires, if wiring is not an issue, go with wires because you're not like that, you're not limited, right? So, for example, if you want to use a large tower speaker, you know, you want to, you want to get the best surround sound, and then uh, you, want, you want to put the large tower speaker as your rear speaker, you can do that as well. Whereas if you are using wireless, then you're limited to the selection of, uh, you're limited to what speakers are available to reuse wireless. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And generally, they're small speakers because uh, the whole point about going wireless is convenience. And most people who want to use a wireless rear speaker, they don't want it to be too big. So most wireless speakers that can be used for surround tend to be a bit small. So if wiring is not an issue and you want to get the best performance, go wired. RMS versus PMPO. Ah, so I, I remember 20 plus years ago, you go to um, those electronic stores and you could see those micro hi fi systems, and they're like, wow, 3000 PMPO, 1500 PMPO. Uh, I don't have the exact, I, do, I, I can't remember the exact term, but it's basically peak sound. Don't use those numbers. Why, why do you think those small systems can reach 3,000 watts? And here we are looking at, twin, at, at AV receivers that are like 10, 15 to 20 kilograms, okay, with huge transformers inside. And we are only talking about 100 watts, 150 watts. That's because RMS is more accurate. It is, uh, RMS in this case is room in square. It's basically, it's a bit, not really exactly, but it's like taking uh, sort of an average measurement across a period of time. Whereas PMPO is the peak power that's coming out at that one point in time. I mean, and it's not even like for one second, it's a split second. It's like the kind of thing. So it's a very inaccurate uh, way to measure. Right, it, it, it is not representative of what the machine is capable of because when you're watching a movie, you're not watching it here for that one, like one simple crash or that one gun bang. You're listening, you have people talking, there's music playing, there's sound coming out from everywhere. So, what that's why RMS is more accurate. So, yeah, when you look for when you're looking at specifications, look at RMS, don't bother with PMPO, no point, no point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Olden days use PMPO for peak power, correct? That's why 20, 30 years ago, you have things plastered on in the shops. What, 3,000 watts, 2,000 watts. Now, you don't see them anymore because those are meaningless numbers. Those are absolutely meaningless, useless numbers. So nobody uses them anymore. Even, even shops, they are not. <laughs> don't have integrity. You don't see them using it anymore. So don't bother with PMPO. Okay. Any more questions? Any more questions? I'm here. I'm here. You know, feel free to ask me questions about building your live home theater. Oh my, building your live home. Of course, your home theater system is live. I'm live here right now, able to answer your questions about building your dream home theater system. Any more questions? Still miss the NS1000. 
You can in fact see it in some of the videos that's playing behind me right now. So, uh, yeah, the NS one thousand a a bit a bit too big for Singapore lah. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Way. So yeah, we didn't bring it in. It is huge. It is like half the height of the NS NS triple five speakers. Crazy. Most Singaporeans wouldn't be able to take it. Uh, the retail shop, the retail shop, it's in Plaza Singapura, uh, 06-02. So maybe it's at the the full address. Why don't I show you the full address? I'm going to need to find a faster way to go through all these different slides. Ah, secret, I'm using PowerPoint, yeah. So this is the address here, and this is our number if you want to call us. Don't block my number, uh, Microsoft. Okay, yes. So this is our store. We are at Plaza Singapore, uh, Dobicot MRT Station. You go go, you go up the, the escalator into Plaza Singapore, come up to the sixth floor. If you're out the lift, you should see us straight away. You have the slick NS3000. Uh. NS3000, yeah. In fact, in fact, uh, I, a bit unprofessional, uh, but uh, I'm staring at a pair of NS3000s as well. They are beautiful. They are slick indeed. Okay, lah, Ken. It seems like it is 8.30. We're almost going on for an hour. I tell you what, I'll give you one more minute. Any more questions? Last chance already. Uh, and if you haven't participated yet, go and check our Facebook and Instagram. Please go and participate and try and win one of this for free, okay? This is worth $219. Good Yamaha headphones. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Win a pair of earphones. Any good title Blu-ray for good demo? Uh, well, this one is really up to you already. Oh. I mean, the common ones are Avenger. Um, like in most in most shops, you will have the at most demo discs. A lot of good demo titles inside. Some people like to use. Yeah. The problem now is that. I'm live and I'm a bit kanjong. Uh. So all the titles, I can't think of any titles right now. But uh, just, I, sh I think you should focus on what you like. The, because what I like and what you like, you know, will be very different. I mean, the best actually, uh, if if you're buying for yourself, you have a few movies that you like, you have to Blu-ray titles. Uh, bring, them, bring them down and test it out in the shop. Because ultimately, the system is built for you. You must like the sound. Instead of the sales guy, you know, trying to... Because the, us, our job is to make you buy the thing. So obviously, we will know what's best. You know, this movie is good for this effect. The movie is good for that effect. But uh, if then, you know, but let's say if the movies that you watch are not what we use to demo, and it's a bit different from the type of the movies that we, we, uh, we use in a demonstration, then if you use it to watch the movies that you like, the effects, the result might be different. So, for me at least, um, I I rather you know what shows you like, and if you have it, of course, bring it down so that we can try it out. That would be the best. Okay lah. that's it. Last question. That was the last question already. Then uh. Okay, so this is it for this live show. Join us next month if you or anybody you know are trying to improve their TV sound but not sure how, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to buy a full proper home theater system. Uh, then don't know whether to choose like a micro hi-fi or active speaker or soundbar. 
to improve TV sound, not necessarily for surround sound and all that. Uh, that will be for next month's Facebook Live, okay? So, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope that you found this useful. Um, yeah, you guys are making it easy for me. And uh, I'll see you next month, all right? Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.